Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles AFC Daily with me, Harry Simu. This show is brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. Lots more uh, transfer rumours flying around, some developments in some of the stories that we've been bringing to you throughout the summer so far. So we're going to touch on those. But before we delve into that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon so that you never miss an upload. And if you haven't already seen it, check out our Dennis Burkamp uh, documentary style podcast which came out this morning it's available of course here on youtube it's the last upload and it's available on all audio platforms too uh, so do please check that out and let us know what you think right let's begin with an update on the kieran tierney situation it was reported uh, by a number of sources and david ornstein came out to back it up too that arsenal had made a bid of 15 million pounds uh, for the Celtic left back and that it was rejected. Celtic believe that the player is worth closer to the 25 million pounds mark. Um, and, and Arsenal, of course, have had you him at 15. So that's what they went in with. Um, but they are set to be going back in with a second bid of around about £19 million. John Hartson, former Arsenal and Celtic man, came out and said that Arsenal's bid was basically insulting uh, to the player and to Celtic and the, the fact that, you know, the, the way they were negotiating was kind of embarrassing. But I, I actually disagree because I think that if you go into negotiations, you don't go in with your top whack first, do you? You always uh, go in a little bit lower and, you know, understanding that you're probably going to be forced to raise that number a little bit so that's the update at the moment it seems as though there is real substance to this story it seems as though Arsenal are going to go back in with a bit of 19 million pounds and to quote some of the reports that were coming out uh, and to quote what David Ornstein said he said that Arsenal are uh, very confident of getting this deal done so uh, make of that what you will I think that this won't be the end we hear of this one. I think it will continue to rumble on uh, until the clubs can find some sort of agreement in between what they both uh, value, Kieran Tierney. Now, I put out a tweet the other day, actually, asking whether Kieran Tierney's injury record should be of some concern. And I got absolutely hammered on Twitter for it. Um, you know, people quick to raise the fact that he'd, um, you know, played 200 games up to now in his career and he's only 22 or whatever etc etc and that's a lot of games and I, I completely agree with that when you look at the overall picture but I think that if you look on the surface of it and probably why I came to this conclusion uh, is that when you look at last season Kieran Tierney missed almost half of Celtic's SPL games and that is a huge proportion isn't it and you know he still managed 36 games I think it was and that's that's good of course but is this kid a little bit injury prone? Is this something that we should be looking into in a little bit more detail? I don't know. Um, that remains to be seen. But for me, it just feels like we've been burnt in the past with fullbacks being injured for a long period of time. And I don't really want to see us in the same situation on the left as we are on the right. You know, assuming we're going to let one of our left backs go. I don't want us to be in a position, you know, like we were with Hector Bellerin when he went out injured. Licksteiner just wasn't good enough to cover him and we ended up playing with a makeshift right back for most of the season and I don't want that to happen again but this time on the left so not saying I don't want Kieran Tierney he looks a fantastic player from what I've seen but I've got to stress I haven't seen a great deal of Celtic so he looks a good prospect etc etc but Arsenal just need to do their checks and make sure that these injury concerns are not something that could uh, you know cause us problems in the future. Italian football writer Alfredo Padula says that Lucas Torreira is unhappy in London and has instructed his agent to look for another club. Uh, hmm. Don't really know what to say on this. I've been saying all along that I don't think the Torreira to Milan story has any real substance other than Gianpaolo is his former manager and Gianpaolo is now in charge of Milan. However, I'm starting to think that maybe there is a little bit more to this. Um, Lucas Torreira was quoted very recently as talking about life in London and that it's not as enjoyable and, you know, the weather and the language have been a bit of a problem for him. And, you know, not anything that most foreign players uh, don't say, you know, when they come to this country, they always talk about the weather and the difference in the lifestyle, etc., etc. So I never really read into that too much, but there are reports that, that Torreira is unhappy. And, you know, these stories are not going away, which obviously causes concern as an Arsenal fan. Now, 
I'm a little bit torn on this one because if it was me in charge of the club, and let's say for argument's sake that Lucas Torreira is unhappy, is it worth holding on to him? Is it worth keeping someone who doesn't want to be here, who you're clearly not going to get the best out of whilst they're unhappy? So what do you do? You need to find the balance. And I've seen Arsenal fans on Twitter talking about the fact that if we were to sell Torreira, it would need to be for 50 million and nothing less. The, the thing is, and you know, I don't want to lose Torreira, I want to make that clear, but if Torreira is indeed unhappy and does want to leave and return to Italy, then I think that we should just be looking to get our investment back because if you do, then you can move on and go and get somebody else with that money. And, you know, there's a danger of pricing people out of a deal for a player who ultimately doesn't want to be in London. So there is that way of looking at it as well. And I'd like to know what you guys think if indeed, and these are just reports, I've got to stress that, as are most of the things that we talk about during the summer, they are reports. There's nothing concrete to confirm any of this. It is just speculation. But if Lucas Torreira is indeed unhappy in London, would you allow him to leave the club? And, and if so, how much for? Let me know in the comments section below. Charlton manager Lee Boyer is resigned to the fact that he's probably going to lose Joe Aribo this summer. He says there are a whole host of Premier League clubs interested in uh, signing the 22-year-old, and Arsenal are said to be one of them. Um, you know, looks a real talent, and he's someone that, that we've been talking about for quite a while now, Joe Rebo. But, uh, you know, again, I'm a little bit reluctant about this one because of the standard he's playing at. And it's no disrespect to players that play in the, in the lower leagues, or it's not to say that they cannot make this step up. But it's very different judging a player who's performed well in League One and then asking yourself whether he'll make it at Arsenal. It's such a huge jump. I think it's a massive jump. And I don't know, you know, what Joe Aribo's performances have been like in, in much detail. I've seen a couple of highlight reels, etc., etc. But the only thing that makes me think that this may not be such a bad idea is the fact that, of course, Joe Aribo would be available on a free transfer. Now, you'd assume that because a lot of clubs are in for him, uh, the contract would need to be quite an impressive one, a substantial one, in order to persuade him that Arsenal is the right place to come. Uh, but yeah, there have been links with Joe Rebo, and uh, it looks as though he's definitely going to be leaving Charlton. So uh, keep your eyes on that one. Let's see how that develops. And finally, on today's roundup, uh, we're going to talk about Wilfred Zaha. Now, reports again doing the rounds today that Unai Emery has gone to the board and told them I want you to break the bank and go and get me Wilfred Zaha. Don't know whether I believe that or not. And I don't know whether the board would even take a request like that seriously. They're so, you know, set on their ways and the way they want to run the club. And there's a clear structure in place. And I don't see Arsenal breaking that for someone like Wilfred Zaha. I think that Zaha is one of those players that he's better off being a big fish in a small pond than he is coming into the sea if you know what I mean does that even make sense he's better off basically at a smaller club where he can shine and there's not a great deal of pressure to perform whereas at somewhere like Arsenal I think the spotlight would be on him so much that you know I worry whether he'd be able to live up to that and I know it was very early on in his career but he did go to Manchester United that didn't work out for a number of reasons um but if Arsenal are going to break the bank and spend big money on somebody, I'd rather it wasn't Wilfred Zaha. But let me know what you guys think about that too in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, share the video and check out our Dennis Burkamp documentary, which is available now featuring Nigel Winterman, Jeremy Aliadier, Arsblog, Lee Judges and Vittorio Campanile. We'll be back tomorrow, tomorrow oh, can't even speak, with another roundup. Until then, take care.